Today, we're going to read Finding Winnie. This is a true story about one of the world's most famous bears, and I know that you know who he is. We'll see who it is. Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear. Could you tell me a story? Asked Cole. It's awfully late. It was long past dark and time to be asleep. What kind of story? You know, a true story. One about a bear. We cuddled up close. I'll do my best, I said. A very long time ago, about a hundred years before you were born, there was a veterinarian who lived in Winnipeg. His name was Harry Colburn. A vegetarian, said Cole. Bear doesn't like vegetables. A veterinarian, it means an animal doctor. I know that. Cole said, that's what I'm going to maybe be when I'm big. If a horse had the hiccups or a cow had a cough, Harry knew how to make them feel just right. Harry's hands were never cold, even in Winnipeg, where winters are so frosty that icicles grow on the insides of your nose. That was just the kind of doctor he was. But a day came when Harry had to say goodbye to Winnipeg. There was a war far, far away beyond the end of the country and on the other side of the ocean, and he was going to help. He would be caring for the soldiers' horses. Harry rode east on a train full of other soldiers, he leaned his head against the window, watching the land scroll by, wondering what it would be like to be so far from home. The train rolled right through dinner and over the sunset, and around 10 o'clock and into a nap and out the next day until it stopped at a place called White River. Harry decided to stretch his legs. On the train platform was a man on a bench with a baby. A baby, said Cole, annoyed. A baby bear, a cub. Harry stopped. It's not every day that you see a bear cub at a train station. That bear has lost its mother, he thought, and that man must be the trapper who got her. What do trappers do? asked Cole. It's what trappers don't do. They don't raise bears. Raise them? You know, I said, love them. Harry thought for a long time. Then he said to himself, there's something special about that bear. He felt inside his pocket and said, I shouldn't. He paced back and forth and said, I can't. Then his heart made up his mind. And he walked up to the trapper and said, I'll give you $20 for the bear. Is $20 a lot? Asked Cole. Back then, I said, even more than a lot. Captain Colburn, said the colonel on the train, as the little bear sniffed at his knees. We are on a journey of thousands of miles, heading into the thick of battle. 
And you propose to bring this most dangerous creature? Bear stood straight up on her hind legs as if to salute the colonel. The colonel stopped speaking at once. And then, in quite a different voice, he said, Oh, hello. The men of Harry's regiment squeezed by to have a look. I've decided to name her Winnipeg, Harry told them. So we'll never be far from home, Winnie for short. They had a very long way to travel and they had already gone three or four feet when Gr Winnie grew hungry. What do bears eat? The men wondered. What don't they eat? Said Harry. Vegetables, Cole reminded me. Winnie ate vegetables, I said. She ate everything except onions. They, bought, they brought her carrots and potatoes and apples and tomatoes and eggs and beans and bread and a tin of fish and some slop in a dish. But Winnie was still hungry. How about dessert? said Harry, holding up a bottle of condensed milk. Taking the treat in her paws, Winnie lay on her back and hummed a happy song as she drank. The men roared. Harry and Winnie gathered with soldiers from all over Canada in the green fields of Valcartier. A whole city of tents had sprung up there. One was a hospital for horses where Harry went to work. Winnie was in the army now. Harry taught her to stand up straight and hold her head high and turn this way and that just so. Soon, she was assigned her own post. Even the colonel agreed that Winnie was a remarkable bear. She might have been the best navigator in the whole army. If you hid something, she could find it? She could. What if it was farther away? And farther still, remarkable, he cried. In the evenings, both of them were too tired to move. When Harry thought about Winnie and the voyage across the ocean, his head said, I shouldn't. His head said, I can't, but his heart made up his mind. Nobody had ever tried to float so many people and animals across the Atlantic Ocean before. 30 ships sailed together carrying about 36,000 men and about 7,500 horses, and about one bear named Winnie. When they finally arrived in England, the regiment went to training on the Salisbury Plain, where it rained and rained and rained. But Winnie didn't seem to mind. She was the mascot of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Brigade, and she attended her post with vigor. One day, Harry came running while she was doing her exercises in the tent. You'll bring the whole place down, he said with a laugh. She had grown. It was winter 
when the order came. The time had come to fight. Winnie posed proudly with the men for pictures to send home to their families. Harry thought for a long time. His head argued one way and then the other, but his heart made up his mind. He went to Winnie and said in a serious way, there's somewhere we need to go. Winnie brushed the mud off her nose and nuzzled in close. Harry drove all the way to the big city. Here we are, said Harry, the London Zoo. Harry took a deep breath. Winnie, this is going to be your home for a while, he said. She tilted her head. We're shipping out to France, he explained. I have to take care of the horses at the front. She rested her big head against him. I know you want to come, but it's not safe. Winnie's head bowed. Harry's hands were warm as sunshine as usual. There's something you must always remember, Harry said. It's the most important thing, really. Even if we're apart, I'll always love you. You'll always be my bear. Is that the end? That's the end of Harry and Winnie's story, I said. But I don't want it to be over, said Cole. Sometimes, I said, you have to let one story end so the next one can begin. How do you know when that will happen? You don't, I said, which is why you should Always carry on. Once upon a time, there was a little boy with a stuffed bear. He'd had his bear ever since he was a baby, but somehow the boy had never found the right name for him. He'd tried Teddy and Edward and even Big Bear. One day, the boy went to visit the London Zoo with his father, and there was a bear, a real bear, on the terraces there. Right away, the boy thought, there's something special about that bear. Her name was Winnie. They became true friends. The boy was allowed to come right inside her enclosure to play. Once the boy had found Winnie, he knew just what to call his stuffed bear. He named it Winnie the Pooh. And the boy was called Cole, said Cole. His name was Christopher Robin Milne. Christopher Robin would visit Winnie at the zoo, and then he would take his stuffed animal on all sorts of adventures in the wood behind his home. His father, Alan Alexander Milne, wrote books all about them. Harry's Winnie became Winnie the Pooh, and there has never been a more beloved bear. But what happened about, what about Harry, Cole asked. When Harry visited Winnie at the zoo, he saw how happy she was. She was being raised. She was truly loved. And that was all he had ever wanted. From the moment they met at the train station in White River, so after the war, Harry returned to Winnipeg and his life as an animal doctor. 
Before long, he was married and had a son named Fred. And Fred had a daughter named Lauren. And Lauren had a daughter named Lindsay, which is me. And then I had a son. When I saw you, I thought, there is something special about this boy. So I named you after your great, great grandfather, Captain Harry Colburn. I named you Cole. That's me, said Cole in a whisper. That's you. And that's Winnie? Yes, I said, that's Winnie. And it's all true? Sometimes the best stories are, I said. Cole's eyes grew big and he said nothing for a long time. Then he hugged his own bear close and let out a yawn. <sighs> that reached far away, and they both turned over and fell asleep. Let's look at some of the pictures in the album. Now remember, this is a true story. This is the real Harry Colburn as a young soldier, and he's the one who bought the little baby bear from the trapper the baby bear was later discovered by Christopher Robin Milne and was the bear behind all the stories of Winnie the Pooh. Here's a little diary, a journal that Harry kept throughout World War I, and this was the first diary from 1914, the first year of the war. The diary page from the day Harry found Winnie on August the 24th, 1914, he wrote, bought bear $20. It's kind of hard to see, but it is here. Bought bear $20. Not sure if you can see that or not. Might be a glare. Here are three soldiers with Winnie at her post. Here's Winnie and Harry, and it appears to be a laugh and a snack. He's laughing, she's having a snack. Here's Harry and his fellow soldiers with their mascot, Winnie. Winnie is in Harry's lap. Here's a picture of Winnie and Harry and it inspired the statue that now stands in Winnipeg, which is in Canada, and London. So there's the picture. And then they made a statue of Harry and Winnie. You can see one if you go to Canada, and you can see one if you go to London, England. This photo was taken of Winnie and the real Christopher Robin. At, in 1925 at the zoo, after they became friends, Christopher Robin's father, A.A. A. Milne, watches them play from up above. This official animal record card shows that Winnie began her stay at the London Zoo on December the 9th, 1914. And this is a picture of Lindsay and Cole in 2013. She knew there was something special about her boy. The end.